Stand Up Diaries with Michelle Christine. Hello and welcome to Stand Up Diaries. Entry 158. And this one's called My Last Wizard of Ossington, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the reason that I'm saying this is because it, it happened in kind of a whirlwind. I I wanted to move to the United States. That was my plan uh, for the medium to long term. And I built this comedy portfolio and I was kind of ready to move on that. And uh, something happened where kind of the sponsorship company I wanted to work with, their roster became full. And this was kind of just after I'd completed this Goliath portfolio over 225 pages to try to get my artistic visa to move to the States. And I felt like it was like a kick to my stomach when kind of that was taken away. And even though I didn't think I was going to um, get it immediately, there's a lot of kind of paperwork that needs to be done, I, I still wanted it. I wanted to achieve it um, and, and knowing that uh, kind of that wasn't going to be possible made me really rethink a few things like how, how should I go about moving to the United States? And I thought about it and I was like, well, I have a degree and I have a degree in environmental studies. I've worked a lot in renewable energy since graduation. Maybe, you know, somewhere where I want to live and uh, Los Angeles being one of them, a cool comedy scene, <laughs> winters, much better for Kuza. Dean was, uh, would go to the West Coast but not say somewhere like New York, which is very similar and busy uh, to Toronto. So it's like, well, if we're gonna do it, let's go somewhere completely kind of different. And the Pacific Coast is so beautiful. And so I thought, well, maybe I can find a job in California. So I applied to, to one job, actually, just one. <laughs> and in the description, uh, was like, why do you want to work here? And I wrote, it, it could only be 300 characters. So I was like, you know, I'm Canadian, but I know I'm worth it. And I'm, you know, passionate and driven and hardworking. And I was like, okay, this is perfect. Uh, hit submit. And it was like air over 300 characters. So I was like, darn. So I copy and pasted it into Twitter. And I didn't really notice that it, it didn't say it was over 300 characters. So I was like, okay, let's take off a sentence. So I, I did it, submit error, took off another sentence, submit error over 300 characters. And I was like, gosh darn it, you know? So anyway, I uh, stripped it down to one sentence, one sentence, one sentence only. And it was, I know I have that fire in my belly that you're looking for. <laughs> and I hit submit and it went through. And my friend Mike was sitting beside me. He's like, oh my God, it went through with like, I know I have that fire in my belly that you're looking for. And I was like, I know, like what an outrageous thing for it to do. Anyway, two hours later, I get this email being like, oh, hi, I saw your application. Would you consider moving to Southern California? And I was like, oh my goodness. And I said, of course, right? And so I did a, uh, a phone interview, and then we did a, like a Zoom, kind of like a Skype interview, and then they offered me the job. And uh, so they sent me an offer letter. Um, I took that to the border. I got my three-year uh, work permit, and I'm moving to California, and I leave on Wednesday. So today's Monday. I leave in two days. July 8th, it's super crazy. Everything happened again so, so fast. And maybe that's uh, a bit of the way that America works where it's just like, let's get this done. Uh, let's move. Uh, and it, it's kind of good, I think, for my personality where I'm always just trying to do it myself and find ways to make things work. And plan A doesn't work. How does plan B work? How does plan C work? And the funny thing was, I was actually really close to a sponsorship for another comedy tour. I was going to do another Cross Canada comedy tour. And uh, I ended up meeting with the CEO of this multi-million dollar company. And uh, when I was talking to him about it, and this is a big long process of like going into their office, getting a business card, and then kind of emailing the marketing person, them not returning my phone calls, leaving a voicemail, nothing, another voicemail, them replying in an email, passing it down the chain, me being like, oh, down the chain's not as good as up, and then me finding the CEO and seeing that their email format, just guessing, might be in the same as the other employee's email format. So I tried their name in that format and it didn't bounce back, and then I didn't hear anything and sent a follow-up email, and then they said they'd get back to me, and then they said they weren't interested, and I was like, come on, what's the worst that can happen if you meet me? And then uh, I get this job opportunity in LA and I say, look, I might be leaving soon, please meet with me. And then uh, he met with me and we had a great conversation. However, uh, at the end of it, he's like, well, if you have this opportunity to work in Los Angeles, shouldn't you take it? And I agreed with him. 
to be honest. And so I email him back being like, you know what, I like your advice and I, and I am, I'm gonna take this opportunity. Like you need that job offer to get that work permit to work in the United States. So I thought sometimes you just gotta strike when the iron's hot. And I decided let's just pack up all my things and go. And it might take a while for my like social security number to come through. So I might, uh, my start date's probably gonna get pushed back. It was supposed to be July 13th. Now it's probably gonna be, I'm hoping August. Fingers crossed. Um, they said it might, like the social security number might take or card might take up to like 30 days to to get mailed, and I need that for uh, starting the job. So you know, I just think at least going there and being there as a point of contact and kind of running around going to social security offices or doing my drug test that I'm supposed to do and trying to get my driver's license. All this needs to be done, uh, and I need to be kind of where I'm supposed to be to get that done. So I figure even if uh, I have to kind of you know, bum around Los Angeles for a couple weeks, I can figure it out. Um, and obviously doing comedy on the side, like it's gonna be a huge hobby of mine um, in Los Angeles and I'll have an income coming in that has benefits so that if I injure myself, I have health care. Like that's coming from Canada, that's something incredibly important to me. So uh, I think it's nice to kind of have that, that home base, that, that feeling of security within this whole new lifestyle so that I don't just end up getting homesick and coming back. Like I want to go there and I want to make it work. That's absolutely, like I can hear the air conditioning coming on right now. I'm sure that's something that comes on all the time in Los Angeles. I can't believe I'm moving to a hot place in the middle of summer. I waited all year for the summer in Toronto and I, I didn't plan on, on moving. I actually planned for my third anniversary show to be at the Comedy Bar uh, because each my first anniversary comedy show and my second anniversary have both been there and I thought oh third time's the charm and I actually even had to cancel that booking. So my plan was definitely to be in uh, Toronto for the summer and we earned it after this February. Ugh. But anyway like I said before, sometimes you have to strike when the iron's hot. And I'm very excited about this new opportunity. Uh, Dean's gonna find himself a job and he's gonna then move there. So that'll be cool. And we're just gonna start a new life. And well, not a new life, but a, a new chapter um, in our lives. And I think that that's important sometimes is to keep the spice of life going, challenge yourself and, and just try new things while you don't have, say, a marriage, mortgage or children to kind of get in the way a little bit. Uh, so I figured if, if America is the end goal of where my home base needs to be to kind of pursue comedy and to pursue my career in the way I want it to be, then, you know, it's better now. Like, why not? Right? Uh, I'm not 30 and I'm only 28. so. I definitely have some time to kind of feel out things and have a little bit of that energy that you need to just kind of start from scratch and do the open mic grind and, and meet a bunch of new people and kind of stay out uh, a little bit later at shows and, and do this full-time job and try to balance all these things. Like I, I think the older that I get, the, the harder it is going to be. So I figure let's rip off the band-aid now and just go for it. And I'm very, very excited. And the company I'm working for is is very um, well to do and are doing a lot of amazing things uh, in renewable energy and that makes me feel good uh, and so yeah it's just weird when you look back like I did not think that my entry into the United States would actually end up being through this environmental studies degree that I got at Waterloo because uh, I put you know five years into that and probably close to you know, maybe to between twenty and forty thousand dollars into obtaining it, and I kind of felt more recently that I wasn't really using it anymore. Uh, so it's kind of nice to say, like, oh wow, look at all these dots that happened in my life, and they're actually all starting to converge, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, my my stand-up diaries. Uh, I might do one more before I leave. It just depends on if I have uh, some fun things to say. Actually, I'll probably have fun things to say about the fact that tonight is my last Wizard of Ozington comedy show. So let's let's aim to do one more uh, in Canada so that my 160th diary entry can be from Los Angeles, California. And I always like when numbers are round. So if 160 could be in Los Angeles, that's better than 159. It's just something crazy about me that likes round numbers. I don't know. But anyway, so tonight should be a blast. Last week it was standing room only in the show, which was great. So it was at the Ossington uh, and it was so amazing to see like people actually standing and waiting to like watch the show instead of leaving, which I thought was really, really cool uh, because um, they just love the show. They love the quality of the show. Um, I try to bring life to the show. I book it well. I try to promote it as much as I can. It's it's a lot to take on to produce uh, a weekly show because um, weeks just fly by 
and so I try to be really diligent about kind of booking far in advance so that I know I always have top talent and just kind of bringing with me a lot of energy and excitement to the show and I love the people that I've met and that I can hang out with after the show. Like Mondays has become my favorite night of the week because after the show I just sit and, and talk with people uh, and there's so many different walks of life that I kind of can interact with and it's kind of just become a really fun social thing and almost like a community that's been built around the show and a lot of people I hope will make friendships that hopefully last a lifetime and I hope that uh, when I come back to Toronto I'll be able to kind of drop in the Ossington and kind of see uh, some of the people that I'm very sad uh, to leave behind. And my parents are going to be coming and my sister and brother are going to be coming to the show tonight too. So it's very exciting to, to have them see me off. And uh, yeah, so T minus two days until I'm uh, in sunny California and I just simply cannot wait. Uh, this has been your next edition of Stand Up Diaries. I have been Michelle Christine.